welcome back to Kids Stories and More. We're here for another read aloud. You know, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is coming up and I have a story I wanted to share. It's called A Picture Book of Martin Luther King Jr. And it was written by David A. Adler and illustrated, which means the pictures were drawn by Robert Casilla. Now my book is <laughs> seen as better days, but I never throw away a book. The words are still fine and the pictures you can still see. And before we get into the story, please smash that like button, that thumbs up, and subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. If you are a subscriber, welcome back. If you've seen our videos before, welcome back. If you're new here, well, I hope you come back again and we welcome you and we're so glad you stopped by. Let's get into our story. Well, as you can see up close, my copy of this book is well worn. I've used it to teach many a class over the years, but I don't throw away books. I'll tape them and retape them and keep them until they're literally falling apart. This is called A Picture Book of Martin Luther King Jr. written by da David Adler and illustrated by Robert Casilla. As you know, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday is coming up. And I thought this would be the perfect book to share. Do you know anything about Martin Luther King Jr.? Martin Luther King Jr. was one of America's great leaders. He was a powerful speaker and he spoke out against laws which kept black people out of many schools and jobs. He led protests and marches demanding fair laws for all people. Martin Luther King Jr. was born on January 15, 1929 in Atlanta, Georgia. Martin's father was a pastor. His mother had been a teacher. Martin had an older sister, Willie Christine, and a younger brother, Alfred Daniel. Young Martin liked to play baseball, football, and basketball. He liked to ride his bicycle and to sing. He often sang in his father's church. Martin in the center with his brother, Alfred, and his sister, Willie Christine. Young Martin played in his backyard with his friends. One day he was told that two of his friends would no longer play with him because they were white and he was black. Martin cried. He didn't understand why the color of his skin should matter to anyone. Martin's mother told him that many years ago, black people were brought in chains to America and sold as slaves. She told him that long before Martin was born, the slaves had been set free. However, there were still some people who did not treat black people fairly. Now, a slave is basically someone's property. It's a person that's treated like a piece of property, like you would a toy or any other thing you own. Not very good at all. In Atlanta, where Martin lived, and elsewhere in the United States, there were white-only signs. See? Black people were not allowed in some parks, pools, hotels, restaurants, and even schools. Blacks were kept out of many jobs. It was a very unfair time. Frederick Douglass, George Washington Carver, and Harriet Tubman. Maybe these are some names that you've heard of before. Martin learned to read at home before he was old enough to start school. All through his childhood, he read books about black leaders. Each of these black people did something important in our history, something incredible. Martin was a good student. He finished high school two years early and was just 15 when he entered Morehouse College in Atlanta. At college, Martin decided to become a minister. After Martin was graduated from Morehouse, he studied for a doctorate at Boston University. While he was there, he met Coretta Scott. She was studying music and they fell in love and got married. In 1954, Martin Luther King Jr. began his first job as a pastor in Montgomery, Alabama. The next year, Rosa Parks, a black woman, was arrested in Montgomery for sitting in the white-only section of a bus.
Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. led a protest. Blacks throughout the city refused to ride the buses. Dr. King said, there comes a time when people get tired of being kicked about. So he wasn't fighting with his fists. He was fighting with his mind peacefully. So instead of them yelling and fighting physically, they just said, you know what? We're not going to go on your buses. We're not going to give you our money to ride your bus since you don't treat us fairly. Hence, the bus, company lo bus companies lose money and hopefully they will change their rules. One night while Dr. King was at a meeting, someone threw a bomb into his house. See the windows cracked here? Martin's followers were angry. They wanted to fight. Martin told them to go home peacefully. We must love our white brothers, he said. We must meet hate with love. Because two wrongs don't make a right. The bus protest lasted almost a year. When it ended, there were no more white-only sections on the bus. So while it took a long time, they ended up getting what they wanted without having to fight physically. Dr. King decided to move back to Atlanta in 1960. There, he continued to lead peaceful protests against white-only waiting rooms, lunch counters, and restrooms. He led many marches for freedom. They had signs. In 1963, Dr. King led the biggest march of all, the March on Washington. Now, if any of you have been to Washington, D.C., our country's capital, you'll recognize the Washington Memorial here, uh, monument here. More than 200,000 black and white people followed him. I have a dream, he said in his speech. I have a dream that my four children will one day live in a nation where they will not be judged by the color of their skin by the content of their character, which means how they live their lives, their personalities, the things they believe, how they come across towards others. The next year in 1964, Dr. King was awarded one of the greatest honors any man can win, the Nobel Peace Prize. The country was changing. New laws were passed. Blacks could go to the same schools as whites. They could go to the same stores, restaurants, and hotels. White-only signs were against the law, so they needed to pull them down. Dr. King told his followers to protest peacefully, but there were some riots and some violence. Then in April of 1968, Dr. King went to Memphis, Tennessee. He planned to march so black and white garbage workers would get the same pay for the same work. So what they're saying is the white garbage men were making more money than black garbage men. And that's not fair. If you're doing the same job, you should get paid the same amount, whether you're a man, a woman, white, black, Indian, you're doing the same job, you should get the same pay. On April 4th in Memphis, Dr. King stood outside his motel room. Another man, James Earl Ray, was hiding nearby. He pointed a rifle at Dr. King. He fired the gun. An hour later, Dr. King was dead. Martin Luther King Jr. dreamed of a world free of hate, prejudice, and violence. Carved on the stone which marks his grave are the words, I'm free at last. And at the end is a little timeline of important dates. Well, you've heard the story. And um, while unfortunately it did not end well for Dr. King, um, we know that his legacy will always live on that the things that he did in his lifetime will be there as a memory, as, a, as something to aspire to, as something to look up to, and has made lasting changes in our society. Now, we still have a ways to go, of course, but 
I mean, we can take so many good lessons from the way he lived his life and how he fought peacefully for what he wanted and what he knew the world needed. And I hope that you will follow in his footsteps and be the best you can be and fight for what you believe to be right and true in a peaceful way. And please remember him every January and all the year through. Thank you for joining us. Please like, share, subscribe to Kids Stories and More, and we will see you next week for another read aloud. Bye-bye.